Hey, Ray, it's great to have you here on the Simplifying Entrepreneurship Podcast. Thanks, Pete. I appreciate you having me. Good to see you. It's great. I mean, we, we get together often in your room on an empowered life on Clubhouse in the mornings and uh, really enjoy our chats there. And I'm so glad that you came here to join me on the Simplifying Entrepreneurship Podcast. And today we are going to talk all about how to coach your team to find their own successes and not sort of dig in on top of them all the time, right? Absolutely. Love the topic. Yeah, and I know that's something that's near and dear to you. What? Just kick it off here for us, Ray. And and uh, why do you think it's so important to let your team members tackle their own issues and not sort of be on top of them on that? Yeah, that's a great question, Pete. Years ago, when I started out as a coach, where I think this thought process started was I used to want to be the hero in other people's stories that there was this idea that I wanted people to need me in their stories. And, and then a little bit later in my career, I heard someone make the statement that we never want to deprive someone of the opportunity to handle their own challenge. We never want to deprive someone of the opportunity to handle their own challenge. And what I realized was that that's how we develop leaders rather than people dependent on me. So if I ever wanted to grow a business or help people go out and do the cool things that they wanted to do, I didn't want to have them be dependent on me. So I think it develops businesses faster. I think it develops leaders faster. It creates freedom for you know, the business owner. So many, so many positive outcomes, I think, from allowing people to handle their own challenges. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And I know, you know, I'm a business made simple coach and we talk about that too. You know, you don't necessarily want to be the hero. You want to be the guide. You're there to guide them along and help them make those wins. Right. And that's the job right. of the leader. It's not, it's not to be there saying, I'll do it and I'll get it done and all this sort of stuff. It's more like, how can I help you? How can I remove the roadblocks so that you're making the progress and you're able to advance through all of those kind of things? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that, uh, you know, the way that we ask questions being that guide, right, that there's a huge difference between telling and teaching all the time, which I think in some cases is absolutely necessary, right? Everyone needs to be For taught sure. how to do this initially. Yes. And then I think it comes to allowing them to figure that out and asking the appropriate questions that allow them to uncover their own genius. Yeah, uh, you know, I love that area of genius and that, you know, when we maximize all of those different areas of genius with our team, then the team really becomes powerful and strong. I mean, it really just starts to do things on its own. And that idea of one plus one equals three becomes reality, right? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. What's your idea in behind, you know, um, leadership that micromanage? Uh, things versus allowing those people to grow? Like how in your time back when you were leading a team, and I know uh, now you're doing a lot more coaching, but I know you led big teams as well, Ray. How did you deal with that when you felt the need? Because I know a lot of people will say, you know, I can just get it done easier myself if I knock it off, right? That's sort of a common entrepreneurial, especially small business sort of trend and thought. Uh, what would you say to somebody who's kind of saying, hey, I, I can just get this done myself and I'm, I'll push through it? So <laughs> it's funny because if I, if I knew then what I know now, I would have made drastically different decisions. Yeah. So what I would say to that now is absolutely, you probably can do it quicker, faster, and better now. The question is, do you want to do it quicker, better, and faster forever, exactly. right? Because I'd rather, I'd rather teach other people to do those things. And while I think delegating is important, the goal isn't to necessarily delegate just because I don't want to do things. It's delegation for the sake of allowing other people, again, to to, to live in their zone of genius and allow people to live out their strengths and not deprive people of that. So yeah, my response to that would absolutely be, you may be able to do it quicker, better, faster now. Do you want to do it quicker, better, faster forever? Or would you rather create some freedom for yourself? Right. And then you can work in your zone of genius, right? As opposed to dealing with all of those other things. And that is such a big thing, allowing those others to take on those pieces that is their genius may not be yours. You may be able to do it better right now, but it might not be what you love to do as the, as the leader either. Right. And allowing that to be passed on 
is going to allow you to work in your zone of genius so that you can really truly do what you love. And when that happens, then then things start to happen and the business grows and you know everybody else grows. My biggest thing when I look at this is if you don't let people find their own solutions and you don't coach them through those things and you don't let them win at the, those kind of things, then they're probably just going to leave because everybody wants to, to feel as though they're part of the decision-making process and they, they want to be a part of the growth of the business. What's your take on that? I agree. And, and, and I think um, in my experience, I, I've experienced three different scenarios, I guess. There are yeah. absolutely, the, absolutely the people that want more, right? Those are the people that, sure. that, that leave. And quitting and leaving, just to be clear, is better than quitting and not leaving. And that is yeah. a second scenario, right? Yes, Where it is. Quit and they don't leave the business. Um, and then the third scenario th th that I experienced was that if, if I had people on my team that wanted me to solve everything, that wanted me to be that person, what I realized, and unfortunately, in some cases, realized it too late, was that they weren't the right people. Yeah. So I think those three scenarios are things that I was constantly juggling. And um, absolutely, yeah, they do leave or they quit and don't leave, which is not a good scenario for the business, or they could just potentially not be the right person. So I want people that want to handle their challenges. Out of those three... What do you think is the worst situation? I'd say quitting and not leaving. Yeah, me too. Me too. I mean, it's dreadful. It's dreadful for the morale mm -hmm. because all of the rest of the team knows that person has already quit. They know that person has given up. And a, a lot of that sort of stuff has a ripple effects throughout the entire organization, right? And it becomes another leadership issue again, right? And it's not fun for that person. No, I, do, I don't think majority of, or, or I think very few people like to be in that scenario. And for whatever reason they choose to stay in it, it doesn't, it doesn't benefit them. Exactly. Ray, can you give us one or two tips on, on how to coach your team to find their own solutions? Like tell us one or two things that, that you might suggest to an entrepreneur that's having issues, you know, just letting, letting them tackle some of that sort of stuff. Yeah, I think that's a great question. I think two things come to mind when I hear that. One, I think identifying where that person is in their development is crucial for this because yeah. some people, especially when they're new in the business or in any business, they need to be taught. They don't necessarily need to be coached. I used to um, recruit, train, and lead salespeople. And if I had some new sales representative who had never been in sales, hmm. when do you want to get on the phone? Well, they would just pick when convenient, not necessarily most productive, right? So I think yep. coaching does follow some teaching. Otherwise, you just have people who are motivated that don't know what they're doing. So I think recognizing where that person is, and once you move into that coaching and into that coaching phase of their career, th this made the biggest difference. And if there's one takeaway that I hope anyone can take away from this, it, it, it's this, it's the, it's the idea that, that I believe when we're coaching someone, the goal is to have the person we're coaching, keep their eyes on the challenge. And for me as the coach or who's ever listened to this as the coach to keep their eyes on the person they're coaching, because the moment both the person we're coaching and I, as the coach start to look at the problem, I become a professional problem solver. So my goal is to keep my eyes on them to help coach them through the challenge rather than provide the solution to the challenge. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I think that's wise advice for sure. You know, Ray, um, believe it or not, we're already coming to the sort of the uh, closing of this particular podcast. Time goes really quick. And what I wanted to ask you as well, on top of this, you know, in your work, how do you help entrepreneurs and business leaders simplify entrepreneurship and what you do every day? Absolutely. Great question, Peter. Thank you for asking that. So I'm the, my, my zone of genius, if you will, my skill set is help freeing people from the limiting beliefs and past negative emotional baggage that allows them to go on to implement the strategy. Mm -hmm. So that's the, so yes, I do coach people and the part where my clients, I think, see the biggest benefit is prior to the strategy, releasing everything that's holding them back. So whatever they choose to do, that strategy is more 
uh, more impactful in their business. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And I mean, I appreciate all you do and uh, love speaking with you on the morning uh, with at, at Empowered Life on Clubhouse regularly. You know, Ray, can you let everybody know who's listening to the conversation here today, how they can get a hold of you and if they want to find out a little bit more information? Absolutely. Yeah. And um, yeah, another great question. Thank you for asking. So my website, you can go to my coach ray that's m y c o a c h r a y.com and the part that's probably most interesting if i could direct people when they go to the site it's how it works to learn about how the release works that allows people to go on to do all the cool things they want to do. So I appreciate you asking that, Pete. Yeah, I think that's great. And uh, I encourage everybody to also join Clubhouse, right? Right. Tell them about Clubhouse as well. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, and Pete, you've been a huge part of that over the last couple of months. And uh, it's crazy to think it's been a couple of months now. Yeah. So Every morning at 6 a.m. Eastern time, we have a room, uh, myself and Pete and a few other people moderate there called Creating an Empowered Life where we talk about the habits, the rituals, the mindsets, the things that we do each and every day that allow us to create and live the empowered lives that many of us desire to live. So it's a great conversation, different topic every morning, roughly 90 minutes, seven days a week, every day. So it's a, it's a good conversation. It is. It is. Glad to be a part of it. Well, thanks so much for spending some time with us here, Ray, and I appreciate it. And we'll see you again probably tomorrow morning. Thank you, Pete. I appreciate you having me on today. All right. Bye for now. Bye.